Hi, my name is Rajveer, founder of Code and Compile. And in this video, I'm going to talk about IO link hubs and converters. In my last videos, you might have seen I was talking about snap signal from banner engineering, in which I was telling you how to get the data from the shop floor and convert that into Modbus. But today in this video, I'm going to talk about how to fetch the data from the shop floor and convert that into IO link. And this makes it easy because it will help you to parameterize your devices. It can help you to do remote monitoring and troubleshooting very easily. And you can scale up your project pretty quickly. And you will see why I'm saying these advantages. You will see in my several examples, which I'm going to show you in this video, how easy it is to use banner IO link hubs and converters and get the data from the shop floor. And furthermore, you will also see how you can display this data on one of my favorite platform, Node-RED, via Modbus. So imagine a situation if you have an application and you want to take the data out of, of your current sensors and you don't want to replace that with your IO link sensor. In this case, you can use various hubs and converters and convert your analog or digital data into IO link. And then you can uh, monitor the signal in your, in your upstream and you can decide what you want to do with the signal. So basically it will help you to reduce complexity of your existing OT devices. And you can further on scale it up and it will also reduce the wiring complexity of your sensors. You will see why I'm talking about that in this video. So I hope you will like this video. So let's get started. So first, let me introduce you to the banner demo kit. This is the wiring layout where you see a couple of sensors actuators, converters, and hubs. And this is my real life demo kit lying on my table. I tried to make it as clean as possible. Now let's talk about IO link converters. These converters are used to convert the discrete or analog signal to IO link. For this video, I will show you how to convert the four to 20 milliampere signal from a radar sensor to an IO link signal using a banner IO link converter. This signal can be further used by any IO link master. For this video, we are going to use a banner IO link master, the very famous DXMR 94K. So let me quickly plug my radar sensor with the IO link converter and connect that further to the IO link master. There we go. It looks elegant, thanks to the M12 cables. Now I will use the free IO link configuration software from Banner Engineering. So make sure the IO link master is powered up and is connected to your computer. Let's hit connect. I have previously assigned the IP address, which you can see here. If you do not know the IP address, you can also click scan and the software will find the device. Now you see the status below is connected. The software automatically detects what is connected on port one. This is the product number of the IO link converter. You will get all the available information when you click on this tab. If you go to process data, that's the information coming from the radar sensor. This information is not scaled yet. The sensor sends the value in current and the converter converts that to IO link format. You can read the parameters from the converters when you click on parameters. You can play around with parameters like hysteresis and set point. It's super cool how easy it is to plug and play your sensor and get the value on the IO link master. So this was about converting 4 to 20 milliampers to IO link. Similarly, this is another converter that can convert 0 to 10 volt signal to an IO link. Now let's talk about the IO link hub. IO link hubs connect many analog signals to a signal port on an IO link master. This two port analog IO link hub can convert signals from two analog sensors and convert them to an IO link. In this example, I will use a laser distance sensor and a photoelectric sensor, which gives an output of four to 20 milliampers. So let's quickly connect the IO link hub to the port two of the IO link master and here you can see my laser and photoelectric sensors connected to the IO link hub. Now you can disconnect and connect again to get the device information of port 2. Here is the device ID of the IO link hub. In the process data, you can read the values coming from the analog sensors. If I move the sensor, I can see the value being updated on my software. So this laser sensor is the measurement value 2 and the photoelectric sensor is the measurement value 1 on my software. Just like the IO link converter, you can also read and write the parameters for the IO link hub. Now let me introduce you to an 8 port analog IO link hub. You can use an 8 port analog IO link hub if you have more than two analog sensors. It can connect up to eight analog inputs or outputs. 
To understand this hub, I will connect a laser distance sensor, which gives a current output of 4 to 20 mA, to port one of this hub and a temperature sensor, which gives an output from 0 to 10 volts to port 3. So let's quickly connect the IO Link hub to the port 3 of the IO Link Master. And here you can see my laser and temperature sensors connected to the IO Link hub. Now let's go back to the software. Let's disconnect and connect again to get the device information. This is the device ID of our 8 port analog IO Link hub. If you go to process data, you can see the value coming to port 1 and port 3 of the IO Link hub. Now, if I move my laser sensor, I can see the value being updated on measurement value 1 and the temperature sensor value coming on measurement value 3. Remember, these values are not scaled yet, but you can scale them on IO Link Master directly before sending them to PLC. We will see an example shortly. In the parameter, you can define the set point for all the ports. So that was about the analog IO Link Hub. You might be wondering about the digital IO. Let me introduce you to an 8-port discrete I.O. link hub. It makes it possible to connect multiple discrete signals to a single port on an I.O. link master. Using M12 splitters, you can extend the number of input outputs to a maximum of 16. To understand this hub, I will use the photoelectric sensor, LED column light, and RGB adjustable field sensor. These two photoelectric sensors are connected to one port using the M12 splitter. So let me quickly connect this hub to port 4 of my I.O. Link Master. The sensors I already connected before. Alright, it looks great and I hope it is easy to visualize it. So after reconnecting the software, we can see the device information on port 4. So let's go to process data. Here you see the discrete input and output states for each port. So. We have our photoelectric sensor with the M12 splitter connected to port 4. You can see the status of this sensor coming to port 4 discrete 2 input state and this sensor to port 4 discrete 1 input state. This field sensor gives the signal to port 8, a discrete 1 input state. So our digital I.O. link hub is reading the signal perfectly in process data in. Now let's play with process data out. In this case, we can change the state of our LED column connected to port 5. If I make the signal true, you will notice the LED light color changes. This LED light has been pre-programmed to show different colors you can change, of course. Now let's look at one advantage of the IO Link Hub. We will use the port mirroring feature to mirror the signal from one port to another. Let's take an example. Imagine we want to activate the light of this field sensor when the field sensor is true. The conventional way is to use a controller, add logic, and trigger the process data out. But we can do that directly using the parameters in our IO Link Hub. Let's look at the signals one more time. We get sensor input at port 8 discrete 1 input state, and its output for the light is connected to port 8 discrete 2 output state. So to create a logic, we can mirror the input state to the output state in the parameters. So in the parameters, Let's go to port 8, and here you will find the option for mirroring. You need to enable the mirroring and define the source port. In this case, I will select port 8 discrete 1. Just write the parameters, now you can see the light is on when the sensor is true. Super easy! Similarly, you can also mirror the signals from photoelectric sensors to LED column lights. Just navigate to the parameters and mirror the port 4 signals to port 5. and now you can see the LED column light being controlled using the sensor signals. When we have the data coming into our IO Link Master DXMR94K, we can share this data with any controller of your choice using these available protocols. For this video, I will use Node-RED to read the data from the IO Link Master via Modbus TCP. Let's imagine I want to read the status of the sensors connected to my discrete IO Link hub on Node-RED. I need to define my local Modbus registers first. I can do this using free DXM configuration software. This software allows me to define some local registers, condition the data, and create small logics. Let's scan and connect to our DXM. Now in the tools, I can select the source as my IO link process data and choose the ports to see the real-time values from the sensors.
Now, if we look at IOLINK port 4 register 4002, it shows the sensor signal connected to a discrete IOLINK hub. You can see there is some encoded value coming to this register. This value represents all the digital inputs of the I.O. link hub encoded to 16-bit data. You will notice the value changes when the discrete signal changes. This value needs to be decoded before we use it on node red. To do that, first we define three local registers starting from 12001, where we want to read the value from individual sensors. Now we can define some decoding rules. I have already figured out the bit address for the individual sensor, so I will copy the specific bit to the defined local register for all the sensors. Now, let's save this configuration and send it to the DXM. Now the sensor signal can be visualized in my local registers. So here you can notice the signals from the sensors are coming to the local registers. Now in node red I can use the Modbus nodes to read the local register values. In the Modbus server, I can write the IP address of my DXM and port address as 502. I can take unit ID as 1, type as holding register, address as 12000 because of zero-based addressing, and quantity as 3. Let's deploy and check. Great, we are getting the sensor value in our debug window. We can also see that the sensor values are updated as it changes. You can be creative and add more visual elements to the dashboard to monitor the sensor signals. Lastly, you can add any Modbus RTU device or controller to the DXM to scale up your project. Feel free to check out my last video on SnapSignal where I'm talking about Modbus RTU sensors and converters from Banner Engineering. So I hope you liked the video. If you want to have more videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the like button. And if you have any comments, feel free to share below this video. I'll be happy to respond to you. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.